Good morning, everybody. We are officially in the Christmas season. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, praise and worship team, thank you even for that song. You know, uh, put us in the, in the Christmas mood, if you will. Thank you for that. Fill the atmosphere always and prepare for the word of the Lord. So good morning, everybody. You know, today is a special day. Today, of course, is the first Sunday in December. And according to our... Um, uh, Christian calendars and Christmas calendars. Today is Sunday, December 3rd. Today is celebrated in the Christian church as the first day of Advent. The first day of Advent is four Sundays before Christmas, so today launches the uh, Christmas season. So uh, I do believe that God has something for us, of course, as we uh, we uh, begin the Christmas season because we know here in the Christian church, Christmas is when we celebrate the birth of Christ. When God became a man and we sang the song, Emmanuel, God is with us. Amen. Amen. So t the title of our conversation is Christmas, a divine presence. Christmas, a divine presence. Advent is the time in which some Christians prepare for Christmas, which is celebrated as, of course, the birth of Christ. So therefore, my question to you is, how do you prepare for Christmas? I know as a church, usually it's the first Tuesday or Wednesday of November. We come together and we put up our Christmas decorations. Uh, for some of you, it's the, um, the day after Thanksgiving, right? Uh, you start decorating your house. For some of us, our traditions is the day after Thanksgiving, we go, we got our Christmas tree and we put our Christmas tree up. And maybe some of you have began buying presents, began writing down your list. Who do you have to buy a present for this year? And and, um, you know, hopefully there's joy attached to that, you know, to enter into the season. You know, how do you prepare for Christmas? Praise God. You know, even as you prepare for Christmas and as you prepare to buy your gifts, and give your gifts. You know, Christmas is known as the time to give gifts. I say today, let us remember the first Christmas gift that was ever given. The first Christmas gift. Not only the first Christmas gift, the greatest Christmas gift that was ever given, which of course is Christ. The first Christmas gift ever given was Christ. Now, Christ is the absolute divine manif manifest presence of God upon the earth. It's when God became a man to let you know that God is with you and God is for you. And, you know, often during the course of our life, we need to hear that. We need to know that. We need to be reminded of that, that God is with us and God is for us. And I want to talk about that today because so often in our life, we forget that. So often in our life, we feel as if God is not with us. So often in our life, we say, come, Lord Jesus, and come quickly, as if he's not here already. <laughs> but uh, let there be a renewed preparation and a renewed understanding of, of course, the greatest Christmas gift ever given, which is Christ with us and Christ for us. So let's turn our Bibles. Let's read our scripture for today. Our scripture for today is Isaiah 64. As a matter of fact, all across the, uh, the Christian church, uh, those who are celebrating Advent today, one of the scripture readings for today is Isaiah 64. With this passage here, let's see, we'll read verses 1 through 5, Isaiah 64, 1 through 5, and it reads, Oh, that you would burst forth from the skies and come down from heaven. How the mountains would quake in your presence. The consuming fire of your glory would burn down the forests. And I like this translation. It says, and boil the oceans dry. The nations would tremble before you. Then your enemies would learn the reason for your fame. So it was before you came down. For you did awesome things beyond our highest expectations and how the mountains quaked. For since the world began, no one has seen or heard of such a God as everybody, as our God, who works for those who wait for him. 
you welcome those who cheerfully do good. You follow godly ways. And therefore, the writer of this passage says, but we are not godly. We are constant sinners and have been all of our lives. Wow, that's a hard statement right there. And therefore, your wrath is heavy on us. How can, how can such as we be saved? The word of the Lord, Isaiah 64. As the author is writing here in Isaiah 64, he is looking at the struggles in life. He is looking at the sufferings which befall us all. And he has concluded because of the struggles of life and because of the turmoil at times in life, he has concluded that God was not with them. He has concluded that God was absent. And therefore he prays this prayer. And therefore he prays, let God come down from heaven. And then I love how he writes this and he says, and on his way down, let him shake the mountains and let him light the earth on fire. <laughs> let him boil the oceans dry on his way down to save us all. Sometimes that's, that's what I want my God to be. Like, God, if you're going to come down and rescue me, ah, let the whole world know it. Let the earth shake. Let the mountains be lit on fire. Let the oceans be boiled dry and then when you show up it's like there's my God there's my God huh. how about your God too amen there's our God sometimes when we experience the struggles and the sufferings in life we we also believe that God is absent I want us to to, to speak from this place because Christmas is the is a celebration of Christ being with us Advent is the preparation of God coming to save us, if you will. I guess Isaiah 64 could be the Advent. Oh God, that you would come and save us. Oh God, that you would come and be with us. And then even as, as Isaiah writes this passage, he says this, he says, but we have all sinned. His, his, his words are quite, I don't know, um, strong. Even in regard to himself, because he wants God to save him and destroy his enemies. And then he, he, he puts pause there. He says, well, God, if you're coming and if you're going to destroy all my enemies, all of a sudden he starts to feel a little self uh, insecure. He says, you know, I'm not so, so good either. You know, if you're coming to, to bless the, the, the holy and the righteous, I'm going to have to question myself. Because he says, but I am not godly. He even said, we are constant sinners and have been <laughs> all of our lives. <laughs> But he still says, come, Lord. <laughs> come, Lord. Hmm. I think God wants to speak to us from this passage. I think because life at some times has suffering in it. And life sometimes has struggle in it. Maybe you, you have it in your life right now. Or maybe you just want to look into the world and see the struggle of the world. And the suffering of the world. And you want to say, you want to say, oh, God, that you would rend the heavens and come down. I'm sure some of you have said that or prayed that in one fashion, way, form or another. When you're experiencing something in your life or in the world, you would say, oh, God, that you would rend the heavens. And not only rend the heavens and come down, like make a, make a complete show of it. Man. <laughs> you know, let the whole world know. Usually we say that when we want God to rescue us from our foes. Like, God, scare the bejesus out of them. To make their knees knock and... Uh, and let them know who you are. Amen. But I think the pause here is, God wants to say, I am with you. And just because life has its struggles, and just because life is trying at times, it does not mean that God is not with you. And it also does not mean that God is not for you. Because sometimes when we have things fall in our lives that are not pleasant, sometimes we think we brought it upon ourselves. Sometimes we say, my sin has brought me to this place of God's absence. And then we struggle with that. We say, because, and that's why, and Isaiah struggled with it as, as well. He said, but our sin has brought us to this place and brought us to this struggle. But God says, I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. Huh. 
And God is not, I say often, he is not the punitive God that you think he is. And I know religion teaches such, but we do not. You do not get paid back for your sins. Someone intervened on behalf of your sins. And therefore, when, when struggle comes in our lives, sometimes we think, well, because I'm a bad person or I'm not living right, I need to try hard or I need to you know, be cleaner, read. I don't know what you got to do to get on the path or so you think. But, but God has said in the form of Christ, you don't get what, what you don't get. You don't have to pay for your sins. Christ paid for your sins. And if, if I thought I had to pay for my sins, listen, from this day forward, I would live a miserable life because my sins are many. Your sins are more, but my sins are many. <laughs> but if we truly believe that, I think Isaiah is, is somehow believing that he is the only reason for his struggle and strife. And therefore, he says, God has left us. Because some of us, you know, who have earthly friends and relatives and whatever, listen, if you do, do me wrong, I don't know about God, but I sure am going to leave you. <laughs> God might stay with you, but I'm gone. <laughs> and therefore we relate and we see God in a, hu in a human way. We feel like, you know, we have failed God, therefore God has left us. We have, we have purposely denied him, and therefore we, we, we deserve our punishment. And there's something inside of us, I think, that wants to be punished for our sins. There's something inside of us, because you want to turn the tables. I know sometimes there's a time in your life where you need to repent. You just need to repent, not because God hasn't forgiven you, but you just need, you just need that release, that relief. You need to say, God, forgive me. And I know some of you need it. Some of us all need that. I know that God is love. I know he forgave me on the cross 2,000 years ago. But sometimes I want to tell him, God, don't you want to say sometimes, God, forgive me, man. Like I'm trying to grab hold of this. I just can't grab hold of this. Would you forgive me, Lord? And if you need to say it, say it, because God's going to say, yeah, man, I forgive you. You need to say, Lord, come save me and come quickly. And, and, and he'll say, I'm coming. And I'm going to save you. But in the, in, in the soft breath between words, he says, you know, I never left, right? Now, if you need this big show, I'm going to give you a big show. He says, I'm going to come down from heaven on a white horse and I'm going to shake some mountains. I'm going to dry up some oceans. But I want you to know that almighty, powerful, glorious God never left you. Feels like he left us because of the tragedy around us. And we say, how could, could this and God exist at the same time? How could my weakness and his beauty coincide? And we don't think it can. Therefore, we say he is absent and he is not with us and he is not for us. And Christ, Christmas, Emmanuel, it says that God is not only with you. He's like the only one that's ever on your side all of the time. Amen. Like God is always for you. Now that's a hard one to believe. That's a hard one to believe, but you are believers, right? You do. Mm, 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 that, was, that, was, that was really bad. That was really bad. Some of you are off doing your Christmas shopping in your mind. It's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, are you talking, preacher? That's it. Now I'm going to ask like three or four more intentional questions. <laughs> and I forgot entirely what I was saying. <laughs> huh. But we, we believe or rather, we don't believe that God is absolutely for you. He is the best friend you will ever have. You ever get into a mess in life and you know you did wrong and you know you are wrong, but you still have that one friend that still supports you. You still got that one friend that's still going to laugh with you and joke with you, call you an idiot and just laugh with you. You're an idiot. <laughs> but still, you, your dear friend, you know. You know, you ever have those hiding places in life when you know you just really messed up, but there's always still a place or a person you can go to and it's all right. That's God. We don't think it's God because God's supposed to be austere and far away and the demander of righteousness. No. We miss the story of Christmas. We miss Christ in the flesh. He says, not only am I with you, Emmanuel says, sometimes I'm the only one for you. <laughs> but count on it. <laughs> count on it. I'm always for you. Hmm. And that's interesting because he knows before we're going to fall. He knows we're going to deny him. That's not extraordinary. And he is still for us. When Christ walked the earth, he knew, he knew that, that all would, would betray him and all would run for him. But he still gave his life for them. Is that extraordinary? Yeah. 
Yeah, Emmanuel, not God with us and God for us. You know, sometimes we feel there's an absence of that, but on this Advent and on this Christmas, I think God wants to reassure you and reassure me. No, he has never left us. He is always with us, and he is always for us. So this day, today, December 3rd, Sunday, I believe that God wants to give you two gifts. Are you all ready? Everybody gets two Christmas gifts today. Two. They're wrapped. Not three, they're two. On the way out, the ushers will hand them to you. They're, they're, they're right now saying, no, I didn't get no presents. Did you get so presents? I, does anybody know where the box of presents are? <laughs> God wants to give everybody here online, he wants to give you two gifts. The first gift, everybody, it's going to be short, so remember. The first gift is to you. First, he wants to give you a Christmas gift. And let's call the first Christmas gift the first coming of Christ. And the first Christmas gift is just as we've mentioned, but I want to read some passages to you. The first Christmas gift is this. this. Know that God is with you. It's, it's, it's beyond our human mind's comprehension. God is with you in every situation and every circumstance. The gift that God gives you is called Christ. It's the first gift of Christmas. It's the greatest gift of gift, Miss Christmas. God is with you, <laughs> and God is always for you. Even in your dirtiest, darkest days, man, you can never fail. You ever feel, sometimes I feel that way. Sometimes I feel in my dirtiest, darkest days, I know there's a Christ inside me that is really extraordinary. I got a, I got a little nod out of you there, Sister Nicole. <laughs> and then we say, well, most of my dirties are, days are dark and dirty, but Christ is always, always extraordinary. So let me read to you this psalm. Here's your gift. You ready for your gift? I'm going to open up for you, right? All right, here's your, here's your gift. Psalms 139 is your gift. Let me open up. You like that one, Pop? What do you know? I got a little chuckle out of the old man, brother. <laughs> here's your Christmas gift. You get two gifts, everybody. Here's the first one, starting in verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence. If I ascend into the heaven, good, you are there. However, what if I make my bed in hell? What if I make my bed in hell? Behold, you are there. If, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide me from you, O oh God. Isn't that beautiful? Sometimes you want to hide in that dark. But that darkness will never hide you from him. But the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to the Almighty. And God says, he's, or the writer says, for you have formed me in my inward parts. God, you want to read that with me? You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for, say that with me, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And say this with me, my soul knows very well. Amen, everybody. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your loving God says his eyes has always saw your substance being yet unformed. Look at this, look at this beautiful, this beautiful saying. And in your book, they are written of me. The days fashioned for me when as yet there was none of them. Remember these last two lines, guys. It's your, it's your gift from God. 
How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. Know that. Know that. And how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. And when I awake, what does it say, everybody? I am still with you. Huh. God is more with you and more for you <laughs> than you could ever comprehend. Yes, if you ascend to the heights of heaven, yes, he is with you. Beautiful. Because I look for him there. But, you know, he's also in the places that I don't look for him. The places where I think I have been abandoned to myself. He says, though you make your bed in hell. It's like he already went before you. Like he was just sitting in a chair waiting for you to arrive. Uh, I'm sorry, but he knew you were coming. <laughs> Though you make your bed in hell, he says, yeah, I am with you. He says, you are my child. My thoughts for you are, are many and precious. God has some precious thoughts for you, more than the sand of the sea. So let us all awake. And let us all open up our gift and let us all know that God is always with us, everybody. And God is always for us. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Now, some of you really personally need that. Some of us listening online really need that. Some of us say in our, in our maturity, I guess, would say, I know that. I know that God is with me and I know that God is for me. Maybe you do. Maybe you're at a good place. Maybe you're at a sure, mature place. But not always and not everybody, right? There's still somebody who needs to hear that. There's still somebody who needs to know, though I make my bed in hell, you are with me and you are for me. That's so extraordinary. That's so extraordinary. So therefore, with that, I want you to take the second gift home with you. The first gift is for you. But the second gift, you know the second gift is for you to give away now, right? Okay, take two. One's for you, that one's for you. But the second gift is to give away. Let's call it the second coming of Christ. Amen. And God wants to tell the world around you that God is with them. And God is for them. I don't know what the world around you is. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's um, the folks you, you talk to at work. Maybe it's um, your, your, your light acquaintances or just the, um, you know, the momentary uh, conversations that you have. You know, in life we have many conversations with strangers, right? Like, you know, God creates moments, people you see and you have some good conversations but never see again. But, you know, God's, God says as you go into your world, he says, here, take this and give this gift to them. And God's going to give you a second gift and says, take this gift. This gift is not for you. It's for the world around you. And, and, and I'm going to read some things here. But God says, I want you to tell them what you know to be true. That although their life is filled with struggle. And although that there is suffering in this world. And although they may think that God is not with them. Maybe they think that they have done nothing but evil all of the days of their life. Maybe they see themselves as not worthy of the love of God or his presence. You will show up. You will be like the one that comes down and rends the heavens. And I say on your way to go talk to them and see them. Let the mountains shake a little bit. Why don't you burn up some forests and dry up some oceans. Like you're in the room, let them know it. And let them know why you're in the room. And let them know where you came from and why you're there. And then you say quite simply, you say, well, I have a little present here that I'm supposed to give you. <laughs> and you give them this gift, this gift that God wants you to give to the world. And let them know that although they struggle in life, it's not because of their sin. It's, it's because life has struggle in it. And because you have sinned does not mean that God is not with you and, that, and it does not mean that you deserve hardship and turmoil. Let them know that although that there is strife in life, that God is still with them. How are they going to know, man? 
How are they going to know? They didn't come to church this morning. Maybe they haven't gone to church their whole lives. We take for granted for what we have. How are they going to know? How are they going to know? Some of them have some old religion and old theology, and they think they deserve their punishment, and their punishment has come upon them. Maybe they're like the writer of Isaiah that says, I'm the most evil of them all. How are they going to know? Unless you tell them something. Unless you open up your mouth. Unless you are the God that they cry for in their hearts. The messenger from heaven. That causes the mountains to shake. And you know the only reason why you're in that moment is for them. Amen. Amen. That there's divine purpose in the moment. And you are sent by the love of God to let them know you are the only voice from heaven they will ever hear this Christmas season. And you're so busy and I'm so busy buying socks and underwear and things that people don't want for Christmas. I say, <laughs> why don't you leave this house with the most precious gift of all? It costs you nothing. It costs you nothing. It costs heaven everything. For heaven emptied itself to give you this precious gift that costs you nothing. And he says, I can't get them all to my house. Will you go and give this for them? They might not come to Christmas dinner. Would you give them this gift for me? Because I think they're going to miss Christmas dinner. They're working. Just go to their job site. Would you give this for them? Would you go knock on their door? Would you go call them or text them? Because they might not come home for Christmas this year. Hmm. And give them something first, which God gave you. And then God says, you go give somebody else. And let them know. Let them know that God is with them and for them. And just because they struggle and they're tormented, it doesn't mean that God has left them, nor does it mean that God is absent. And although you might not be able to explain theology to them, you can cause them to live it and experience. They might not understand that God is with them. But they know that you're standing next to them. Which is God with them. They might not understand Isaiah. And they might not understand the Bible. They might not understand Emmanuel or Christ. But they know that you're there. That you're with them. They know that you stopped your day. They know that you took interest in them. That you're listening To what they're saying to what they're not saying and then you give them God with them give them yourself yes. give them a moment give them a conversation give them love give them joy you know we might not be able to explain the theology of God being with us in suffering so somebody in their suffering go be with them in their suffering you know somebody's having a hard time go be with them that's Christ that's Emmanuel, God coming the flesh. That's us <sighs> coming to a greater understanding of God and life and realizing God is not me buying a present and giving to you on Christmas Day. That's beautiful. We don't have to explain that. But the real essence of Christ and Christmas and is, is you, man. It's you realizing your, 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 your destiny and your purpose and why you're on the earth and the power you possess and you don't even know it. The gifts that are given to you are so powerful and rich. And there are people out there that are just dying for a little, little touch of water on their dry tongue. And you have the ability, you have the power of life where you can stop your busy, hectic day. Put down your peppermint mocha. <laughs> or, or, or maybe go buy a peppermint mocha for somebody else. And then sit down and drink it with them. I believe this is Christ, the second coming of Christ, if you will. The first coming was him and you, but the second coming is you giving him away. Is there anything greater than that? No, but we live as if there is. And I know I talk about this often. We live as if our jobs and our, and our houses and our bills is more important. It's such emptiness. If you believe that God loved you, if you believe that God will take care of everything in your life, you would have time to help people. But if you don't believe that God 
is with you and for you, you can't help anybody. That's why you have to open the gift first. If you believe that God is with you, he's taking care of you, the things that you're chasing after and worry about, you don't have to, it would give you so much time to actually bless somebody else, to actually sit with somebody else, live with somebody else. And I say the greatest gift that we have to give, the second gift I say, give them this gift. Let them know that they have help in their struggle. Let them help, that they have help in their trial. So therefore, if somebody is in distress, why don't you ask God, how can you relieve their stress? Find one person. If you need more gifts, come back, we'll give you more. But start, start, start with one. And Christ is Emmanuel, God with us and for us. The substance of that is, go help somebody in their trial. Does somebody need their electric bill paid? Go pay their electric bill. Does somebody need a friend? Go be a friend. Go take somebody out to lunch. Say, I want to take you out to lunch for whatever, for the Christmas holiday. Go have a cup of coffee with someone. Somebody needs a job, give them a job. Someone needs a car, give them a car. Someone needs a house, give them a house. I don't know how much substance you got, but give them whatever you got. <laughs> you guys want the house, right? <laughs> it's all right, it's coming. Somebody is in stress, go, you know you have the power to do that. Isn't it interesting that you don't have the ability to get yourself out of your own hot mess? But anybody experience that? You can't, <laughs> Lord have mercy. But how is it possible that you have the ability to help so many others? That's divine. That's divine. Hmm. Amen, everybody. So in closing, I do say this, this is Advent, it's, it's, it's the first day as you prepare yourself for Christmas, Christ. There were two gifts. Receive the first one, don't, don't, don't gloss over it as if you know. Go, go home, read one, Psalm 139. Know him, accept him, accept him. I, I say this to Christians, believers, accept him as your Lord and Savior. Know that he rules your life and he protects you and he provides for you. You have nothing to worry about. I know we spend most of our time worrying, but only because you don't believe in God. If you believed in God, you wouldn't worry. So the first gift is for you. The first gift's for you. And then it would free you up to take the other gift that God has given you. Take that gift and go find someone. Be intentional in your actions. Be intentional with your words. You can tell them that God is with them. Some people can hear that. Or you can just be the God with them. You can say that God is with them in this struggle, or you can just be with them in this struggle. You can say that God's going to help you with your finances, or you can just help them with their finances. You know, Marie, even our Christmas tree, you, you can tell them this and that, or you can just go buy, buy a gift for their children and give them a, 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 a present to open on Christmas Day. You know, praise God for our, our tree uh, ceremony this Saturday. Let it be. Let God do the natural things. Maybe we all have cookies and coffee and and sing the songs and light a tree. But we pray, may hearts absolutely be touched through the gifts that are given, right? Let, let, let our world know that God is with us and God is for us. Amen, everybody. Amen. Sunday, December 3rd, the first day of Advent, we prepare ourselves for the coming of our Lord. Let your hearts be sensitive during this season. Always remember the greatest and the first gift ever given was Christ. Christ to you, now go give them to somebody else. Amen, Amen everybody. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to ask our praise and worship team if you'll close us out. Praise God, and we'll all stand. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I pray that uh, God is speaking to you. I believe he is. And I pray you'll take some time and read Psalm 139 this week. There's a ton in there. That's a, it's a powerful psalm, and I received that. I received that gift this morning. I pray God give us the strength to, to give out the second gift. You know, David closes out that psalm. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Now, he just acknowledged how awesome he is and God made him. So he ain't asking God to search him to find sin. That ain't what he's asking him to search him for. The wicked way is doubt. Lord, search my heart, search my thoughts. If there's any doubt, if I have any question, anything that comes against you, Lord God, lead me into the way that is everlasting. 
which means there is no separation. I pray that you will read through that and you will not doubt God's love, that you will not question his love. Because that's the only thing that's wicked is when we doubt God. What's more wicked than that? Doubting his love, doubting his mercy, his goodness. I say, search us, O God. Search us, O God, and lead us into the way that's everlasting. Lead us into a life of faith because we know who we are. Amen? Let's go before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we are grateful this morning, Lord God, for the gift. Lord, of course, the gift of your son, Lord, and the, the gift of your word that you've given us this morning, Lord God. And uh, Lord, we are fearfully, we are wonderfully made, Lord God. We are made in your image. And so we are grateful, Lord God. We're grateful for your love because we cannot count them, Lord. They are greater than the numbers of the sand, Lord God. And we say, Lord, search us, Lord God. And would question it or doubt it, Lord God, and know who we are, Lord God. And we pray, Lord, you give us the strength, Lord God. We pray that you give us the opportunities, Lord God, to give out the second gift, to touch the lives of others, Lord God, that they would know of your mercy and of your love, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord, for this Advent season, Lord God, that you just continue to unfold all of your word and all of your goodness in our lives, Lord God. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.